Are you a good cook? No, I, I'm glad that I can pour a bowl of cereal. Ben Pasternak, CEO and founder of Simulate and Nugs. Are you ready to answer some questions? Let's do it. We've all heard of entrepreneurs dropping out of college, but I've never heard of one dropping out of middle school. Is that a badge of honor? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. <laughs> did you ever attend a prom? I did not. Do you want to attend a prom? I'm down, yeah, it'd be an interesting experience for sure. <laughs> Can we set it up? <laughs> <laughs> You're 21 years old, and this is your third company. What made you switch from tech to food? Well, it's still tech, it's just a different type of tech, and after I sold my previous company, I had a seventh or eighth life crisis about what I wanted to work on for the rest of my life. It was fascinating to me how anti-technology food was, and it felt like a good opportunity to create a techno-optimistic nutrition company. What's the biggest difference between a tech startup and a food CPG one? They're actually super similar, right? I mean, generally, all you have to do is create a really great product and scale that product. I think coming from software, the scalability aspect is much easier than scaling a physical product so that would be the, the hottest thing I think. Are you a genius? No. What's the Nugs elevator pitch? Nugs elevator pitch is just that it's a chicken nugget simulation made out of plant proteins and you know it, it tastes exactly like chicken but it's better in every single way. Simulates elevator pitch is essentially a techno-optimistic nutrition company. From a brand standpoint, were you ever concerned that although so much of our food is processed and uses technology, that consumers don't necessarily want to eat technology? Yeah, totally. I mean, it's kind of like the bet where we're willing to take. And initially, you know, it seemed like we were very wrong. And uh, when we first released the product, that was kind of like a, a bit of a negative reaction. But over time, people have really come around to it. You don't find there's any odd of mixing tech and food? There's definitely an odd of mixing tech and food. I think uh, historically, food as a space is pretty anti-technology. Any integration of technology is generally rejected, like genetic modification, uh, even food processing is essentially turning food A into food B, um, and that's been looked down upon quite a lot too. I think that as a result, our brand does look kind of weird, and it's because the opposite of, it's doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Does good packaging make food taste better? No, there's a lot of terrible, I mean, really nice packaging with terrible food. How much of the success would you credit to your packaging? The packaging was initially done by this artist, Ryder Rips. The core thesis was that we wouldn't use any green. I think definitely our branding, like, you know, has carried us a long way. And we, we've noticed our sales directly improve every time our product improves. What was the reason to put a live chicken on the front? Well, it's kind of interesting because it's, if, you know, for whatever reason, all these other plant-based companies haven't done it. But uh, by having a photo of the animal you're trying to simulate on the box, you know, the first thing people think when they see the box is this is what they're about to eat. So it's kind of like, I guess, psychology. <laughs> What's been the biggest difference between grocery and DTC? Biggest difference is with D2C, you have a much greater opportunity to edu educate users on the product through our website. You know, we have lots of information uh, versus in retail, you know, all we have is our super weird packaging. I think actually the day before we shipped it to retail, someone noted that, you know, we have no product highlights on the box and we were like, huh, that could be an issue. But it turned out that that's made us, that's made us really stand out on shelf and uh, has gotten us a lot of attention on the retail level. Besides sales, what metrics do you look at to determine the health of your brand? NPS, I mean, we really look at all the product stuff and in general, we're getting constant flow of feedback on our product every day through whether it's social or, you know, we have different tools that we've built as well. So really just seeing what people say about the product is what's most important. All right, we are on the Flowcode Flowcard. So Flowcode is our sponsor for this season. They've created a next-gen QR technology with mobile flow landing pages. And they will design a flow code for you that's appearing on screen now for people. Anyone could just take their phone out and instantly the camera will recognize it, bring it to a flow page. It could be content, coupons, whatever you'd wanna do to help you connect the boxed CPG world as it's in a retail space to your brand experience. So knowing that that's gonna happen, what would you love to have your flow code linked to? I'd love them to replicate uh, Simulate.com's landing page. What's been the best day in company history and what's been the worst? Best day in company history, I think probably um, in Q1 20, 20, we were going from doing, you know, selling a couple boxes a day to hundreds of boxes a day really quickly. And it seemed like every day we were beating our sales records. Uh, so that period of time felt really great. And the worst, worst day in company history, in the early days, you know, everything sucks. Uh, so I think for the first year, probably a year in, things were really fuzzy and we had shipped our first version of the product and no one liked it because it wasn't that great. And I also personally didn't feel it great. So it just, everything was just not great. What acquisition channel has been the most successful for you? We were really, really good at Facebook ads in like, I guess the middle days. And now what's best for us is basically everything from yeah, TikTok to still Facebook, Instagram. So we've gotten pretty good at uh, all the social stuff. 
If you had one dollar to spend, where would you spend it? TikTok. What's your kryptonite? I think like us, you know, imagine people, it's like you're never good at it, right? You can always get better and better. So I always want to be better at that. Work from home or office? Office. I've learned a lot of brands have certain tribe that really helps them fuel their success. What's your tribe? We have this like, weirdly we've grown this community. I think there's a lot of early followers that tried the product that wasn't great and have followed along with each version. And as a result, they feel like they've made some contribution to the product and I guess they have. Over time, we've gathered this community of people that were really passionate about the product and then additionally are so passionate about the memes and the Instagram and lots of excitement there. Who's your target audience? Lame answer, but everyone. I think that uh, right now our core demographic is Gen Z uh, and millennials. How do you make sure your brand resonates and doesn't just check boxes? We never check boxes. I mean, we just do what's aligned for our vision. And, you know, sometimes that may not, you know, resonate with consumers. And, you know, so far it seems like it has. But yeah, we're generally just kind of creating a visual identity for our vision. What's the biggest lesson you've learned so far? I think like, I, you know, throughout this whole process, I had to learn how to build a team and manage people. Uh, and that was really hard for me. Did you not have to do that in your other tech companies? I did, but it was it was much smaller scale. So, it, you know, things kind of like work themselves out. But when it's larger, things break and it's like up to me to fix them. Are your parents proud? My parents are proud, yeah. Who do you aspire to be? I aspire to be me. Are you a good cook? No, I, I'm glad that I can pour a bowl of cereal. What keeps you up at night? And what time do you wake up in the morning? Just ensuring that our product is uh, getting better and better at a really rapid pace, that's uh, the most important thing to me, and ensuring that we have the talent to enable that. And I wake up at about 6.30. If you could control Z, one decision you've made at Nugs, what would it be? It's a, it's a tough question. I, I, it'd be more stuff internally than externally. Externally, you know, like we've definitely made mistakes, um, but you know, mistakes is how you get the learning. So I'm not sure if there's anything that we'd control Z. Ben Pasternak, CEO and founder of Simulate and Nugs. Thank you so much for coming on and answering some questions. Thanks for having me. I'm Ian Wishingrad, and I'll see you next time on I'm With The Brand.